Hi, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your day today to join us for this Teledyne Marine Link webinar. My name is Melissa Rossi, and I'm a Director of Marketing for Teledyne Marine. Today's webinar is titled Advanced Acoustic Communications Case Studies from Around the Globe. Our pres presenter today is Carl Mancuso. Carl is the Product Line Manager for the Benthos Acoustics and Communication Products and has been the, with Teledyne Marine for almost a year and a half. He's been back in the marine technology field for about 10 years, and he says back because he actually started his professional career as an electronics engineer working on submarine sonars and control systems for towed communication buoys. From there, he spent many years in the semiconductor and computer industries in both technical and business roles. Carl has a BSEE from Rensselaer Polytech Institute and an MBA from Clark University. In addition to his work here at Teledyne, he's also on the board of directors for Marine and Oceanographic Technology work Network, or MOTEN, here in New England. So without further ado, Carl Mancuso. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today um, for a quick look at some really interesting ways that our customers are using our uh, modem technology and, and other things that we uh, produce here at Teledyne Marine. I'm going to uh, start with a couple of overview slides to give you an idea where Benthos fits into the, the big Teledyne Marine picture. Uh, we're part of Teledyne Technologies, which is a, a very large a uh, global corporation involved in many different areas, uh, started out mainly in the areas aerospace technology, but has expanded throughout the years uh, into other areas as well. And uh, somewhere along the line uh, in the not too distant past, they realized that uh, Teledyne challenges as being in deep water. Um, as you can see on the slide, you're dealing with extreme temperatures and, and some pretty tough requirements uh, that you have to meet. Um, repairs is really not an option in either location. Um, and um, it's just a tough environment. So there was a lot of synergies in the market. It's so technology. And Teledyne Marine um, has grown into uh, a really good um, combination of, of technologies and companies, 23 companies all together that come together under the Teledyne Marine umbrella. And we're pretty much divided into three segments, uh, interconnect and seismic, vehicles and imaging and instruments. And Benthos actually has um, place in both the vehicles world and in the instruments and imaging world, as you'll see coming up on the next slide, which gives you an overview of our products and technologies. And what I decided to do, the way I structured this, the webinar, is I want to give you a quick overview of our products and technologies uh, before getting into the case study. So this way, when you do see the case studies, you'll know what kind of products I'm talking about and where they fit and um, how they use. So um, real quick, just about everything that's coming out of Benthos nowadays is centered around our modem technology for underwater communication. So that includes naturally the modems, but it also includes the acoustic releases, um, the universal topside systems that uh, can speak with the modems and releases and other products under the water. The smart, smart products, which are a combination of the releases and the modem, so it's incorporating the communications aspects along with the mechanical release technology as well. Um, also based on the modem technology is pr our positioning systems for USBL, LBL, and the, and the DAT, uh, which you'll see in a minute, is a key component into those. Um, but also, based on that technology, we offer a black box pinger locator module that can be used to uh, locate missing air aircraft pingers. So uh, I'll get into a little bit of that as well. Uh, finally, uh, there's a couple of products that are not based on our modem technology, but can incorporate our modems. Uh, and that's the sub-bottom systems. One is we make a, uh, a module that is used uh, in uh, 
reasonable size AUV systems and large AUV systems, which allow you, you to see what's below the sea floor. But then we also still offer the deep toe system platform, which on which you can combine uh, many different types of sonars or sensors with a, or whatever the case may be. That's a deep water system goes down to, uh, it's a tethered system that can go down to about 6,000 meters. So I've got a few slides here on each part of the uh, product line. Um, I'll go run through these really quickly. There were acoustic releases. We've got three depth ratings. Um, uh, uh, battery life varies depending on the model, um, different load ratings, et cetera, and uh, specialized depth boxes to, uh, to talk to the acoustic release to get status updates and uh, location and to release them. On the modem side, uh, that's the core product. Uh, we offer both standalone modems in uh, three depth ratings. Uh, we also have three frequency bands for a variety of re uh, reasons, um, one of which is the lower the frequency you go, the, the greater the distance, communication distance, you'll be able to get out of the mo uh, modem system. Um, but we also have different transducer options. Uh, I show pictures there of integrated transducers but we can set it up with a, a remote transducer so that you could mount it in your system and have the transducer connected via a short cable. Uh, we also offer OEM board sets. Uh, so you can incorporate our modems into your end products. And you'll see if that in a, a few of the case studies that I'll present. A specialized version of the modem that I already mentioned once is the, the DAP, the Digital Acoustic Transponder. So we take the modem, we add a little bit more electronics to it, and we also offer, uh, add a specialized transducer. So let, let me back up a second. All of the modems, you could use the speed of sound in water to calculate how far away the other modem is. So you transmit a signal, it goes through the water, gets to the other modem, there's a, a little latency in the turnaround that, that is known. That modem transmits back to the first modem and knowing the speed of sound in water, you can figure out how far away it is. So all of the modems uh, and transponders will give you the distance or, or ranging uh, we, uh, as it's referred to. Um, the DAT, however, has a specialized transducer and extra electronics, like I said, it can also give you direction and elevation. So the DAT is the heart of our USBL and other positioning systems. And you'll see a couple of case studies where people are using it as well. Um, all of our modems and releases and uh, the DAT, they're all can be used as USBL transponders in the system. Uh, so that's important to know. And then I already mentioned the universal top side deck boxes that uh, uh, you can use for command and control and, and other things. And I'll, I've got a couple more slides on that. Um, one other thing about the modem, uh, specifically more uh, on the OEM side, but al also on the finished product side, is we've got the, the standard ATM series modems and the compact modems, which are used in uh, the USBL transponders. We're in the process of introducing uh, the ultra compact transponder and modem, which will be out probably third quarter of 2020, um, which uh, is shrinking the electronics down by kind of chopping the board in half and, and folding it, it, it over so that uh, it's a two board set, but it fits in a much smaller form factor. Um, so we'll be able to offer that both as a standalone product and as the OEM board set. Um, so th this table gives you an idea of the relative sizes of the, uh, the three different modem products and the, uh, the power output uh, on the ultra compact modem where actually it's looking like we'll be able to introduce it at a, at a substantially higher power level than the compact modem because we're, we've got a new transducer that goes along with it. Um, but uh, that's, you know, that'll come out later on this year. Um, other thing I wanna mention that's really important across all of our modems, um, we are Janus compatible. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Janus spec, it's being driven by NATO, mainly out of Europe, but it's, it's a global 
uh, interoperability specification, uh, where the ultimate goal is to have modems from different manufacturers be able to talk to each other. And Teledyne Marine and uh, Benthos, we're on the forefront of that uh, specification and interoperability uh, capability. Uh, we've been involved in the, uh, the different um, meetings that Janice has had over the years and have been driving the spec and have, have demonstrated interoperability at the uh, last meeting back in November. So that's that's important for looking forward, not only in the NATO world, but uh, in other areas as well. Um, a uh, new introduction that we made last year for our deck boxes is the ability to uh, include uh, or incorporate GNSS or GPS positioning into your deck box, which is a really big deal because a lot of times you're going out on a very small boat or a small raft to uh, deploy your acoustic release or your, your USBL nodes, and you don't want to have to take, uh, say, a laptop with you if you can avoid it. So now, by plugging in an external USBL, uh, not USBL, GPS or other uh, dongle, uh, you can get a GS, GPS referenced location for where you're putting your asset into the water. Uh, you can then run a box survey around it to get a more exact location. Store those coordinates uh, in the in the UTS system, offload it onto a USB stick, and then later on, uh, say a year later or whenever you're going back to retrieve it, you can um, plug those coordinates back into your into your system and be led right back to where uh, you left it. Um, find it, do ranging to it, really pinpoint it again, and then. Uh, so a really handy feature really reduces the amount of equipment you need to bring on board. But uh, we'll have another webinar on that. Uh, look for that in the near future. I mentioned the track at USBL system. The harder that is the DAT uh, and the, uh, the compact transponder that I talked about earlier, the compact modems. Uh, we have a specialized deck box. We have a, a specialized uh, graphical user interface for the traffic system, uh, not traffic, track it system. Um, and um, that's all available uh, through us. And again, our acoustic releases and modems can be used as subsea transponders as well. Um, this is just a quick graphic of, uh, of the demo that we typically do at a trade show or, or at TMTW last year we did it that shows putting a DAT in the water and then tracking an ocean science surface vehicle, a Seabotics ROV, and a few R500 releases that we put in the water. So uh, using the USBL system, we can uh, locate where they are in real time as they're moving around. Uh, last thing to talk about, I mentioned the black box ping a locator. It's based on the DAT system, so it gives you range, it gives you elevation, and it gives you direction of where the, uh, the sound from the pinger is coming from. So as you're going by it, either in a vehicle or, or whatever the case may be, you can uh, locate where the, uh, the pings are coming from. So um, we can get you more info on that if uh, this is something you're interested in. So um, that's the kind of brief overview on the products and technologies coming out of Benthos today. Now let's get into the case studies. And um, there's really a couple of classes of case studies here. One uh, or a couple of them deal with putting some sort of sensor package somewhere in the ocean. It's fixed. It's not moving around, but it's transmitting either sensor data or other types of information that is then used somewhere else. Uh, the other kind of class of case study is uh, a moving vehicle, an AUV or something of that nature, which um, you can communicate with or um, collect data from or whatever the case may be. So let me get into those right now and give you an idea of how people are using our modems. So the first one I want to talk about is a tsunami warning system that's been deployed by NOAA from their National Data Buoy Center. And they use a, a number 
of Bentos products to um, sense, they, there are pressure sensors on a subsea platform, um, which are then converted over to equivalent water depth. That information is transmitted up to a surface buoy and then transmitted from there via uh, an RF link. So what you're getting is uh, real-time data from nodes that are um, positioned all over the world of um, wave pressures that are happening. And if, for instance, a tsunami is occurring, the pressure is going to increase rapidly. Uh, the uh, bottom sensor goes into more of an um, event mode and starts transmitting more rapidly uh, data up to the surface buoy and then via satellite or RF link, it goes to the, the shore station and uh, the appropriate warnings can take place. Um, here's a close-up look that shows the, uh, the, the subsea platform talking through the benthos acoustic modem up to the uh, surface buoy and uh, the other components of the system that are involved. So uh, like I said, uh, it's a really successful system. It's deployed all over the world. Uh, there are other companies and countries that are doing similar types of things using our technology. Um, so uh, this is a, a pretty well-known solution that uh, that's uh, pretty commonplace nowadays. Another one that's similar but different is uh, up in the uh, Canadian high Arctic. Uh, the folks at Fisheries and Oceans Canada are using our modems to uh, transmit a variety of data. What they're doing in this case is measuring the sea melt and uh, comparing that to salinity readings in the water. So uh, not sea melt, the ice melt of uh, surrounding glaciers. So as the glaciers melt, uh, you get more fresh water into the, uh, into the water and uh, the salinity goes down. And they've been able to correlate that to the freeze up of shipping lanes, which has an economic impact. So how they're doing this is uh, they've got a data hub fixed to the seafloor. And around that data hub, they have a, a number of moorings that have uh, different types of sensors on it uh, from different companies. As you can see, it doesn't have to be a Teledyne sensor. They're also using uh, CTDs from Seabird, and ice profiling sonars from ASL Environmental, and uh, IC Listen from Ocean Sonics. So they're combining all of this data from the different uh, moorings um, that there that's all being transmitted to the data hub and then the data hub is connected via the, via that long eight kilometer cable back to a station on the shore that then transmits it um, by an rf link uh, or in this case satellite link i'm sorry back to uh shore station uh for um real time or near real time monitoring so what's really neat about this type of configuration is that it's modular and movable and customizable. So they can leave that, uh, that main node at the bottom uh, uh, at the seafloor uh, in the channel, and they can move the moorings around, they could use gliders, they can use whatever the case may be to collect the data all into one spot and then use the cable to um, transmit back to the shore station and, and then use the data uh, wherever the, uh, they need to use it. So that's uh, you know, similar but different, like I said. Um, now switching over, I'll talk about some, uh, some AUV applications. The first one is uh, over at Ambari, Monterey Bay uh, Aquarium Research Institute. They've been using our modems and DATs, uh, as well as some other Teledyne Marine products in their um, uh, long-range uh, autonomous AUVs. So in this, in this instance, they actually have three autonomous vehicles out in the water and they're doing uh, studies of the, the movement of chlorophyll and, and other uh, 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 parameters in the water. So you can see they've got uh, the AUV named Aku down near the uh, the, the seafloor, moving around collecting data, 
and Oba in the middle is spiraling around Aku and collecting its data and relaying it up to the surface vehicle, MOLA, who is then transmitting the data over to a, a shore station. So again, using the modems to, uh, to remotely connect or collect, sorry, real-time data from different platforms. So um, I just kind of ran through that, but uh, you can see the types of depth ranges and uh, distances that they're able to communicate over. They're also using the, uh, the DVL from uh, our sister organization, RDI, as well as some other things from, uh, from our organization to uh, make things happen. And it's uh, some, just a sample of the data they, they've collected, uh, both uh, from the, the chlorophyll and uh, temperature sensors, but it's reference to the actual position and trajectory of the, uh, the subsea AUV um, that's being relayed to shore. And uh, the, the, in the bottom left, that shows kind of like the uh, traje trajectory map and uh, current static sensing as well. Okay, going from uh, ve uh, vehicles talking to each other to more uh, working with a company to help enable their technology by modifying our technology for them. So uh, early on, before uh, BA sy BAE Systems acquired Riptide, we worked with them to incorporate our compact modem technology into their small UUV. And what we did, they came to us and said, you know, we really like your compact modem, but the form factor doesn't work for us. The long skinny form factor doesn't work. Is there any chance that you could relay out the electronic circuit board to fit into our UUV? And oh, by the way, we want to use the transducer as actually the nose cone of the UUV. So we actually worked with them and did that. We relayed out the board into their, their form factor we came up with a specialized mold so that uh, we have the conical transducer instead of the, uh, the standard transducer that looks like a little top hat. And the result was that we were able to nicely fit into their stack and uh, be incorporated into their system. So that, that was uh, you know, a good example of two companies working together to uh, bring a good solution to market. So the message there is that if you do have specialized requirements, please, please contact us and let's talk about it. Another example of specialized requirements that, that we did with another AUV company was uh, we worked with Ocean Server a long time ago. And in, in this case, it was a long time before they were acquired by L3 and then uh, L3 became L3 Harris. So um, we've been, like I said, working with them a long time and what they decided to do in the, the new Iver 4 platform that they uh, introduced in 2019 is they're using both our modem and our DAT uh, within the, uh, the AUV. And uh, what they're using it for, uh, besides uh, communicating data, is they're also communicating commands and positioning. And you could see that what we did uh, in the graphic in the, the lower right is rather than just giving them our standard transducer, we remolded it into a fared uh, configuration. So that reduced the drag of the vehicle going through the water. So um, it was, a, again, two companies working together to come up with a good solution. And, and what they're using it for, like I said, is they can command the system on the fly through our modem and DAT. So if they need to reconfigure the mission or put it into a sleep mode or tell it to station keep or whatever the case may be, through their vector map mission planning software, they can do that and communicate with the vehicle while it's underway under the water. So this is just a, another look at their their vector map software and the mission planning parts of it. So that's that's been a pretty successful uh, collaboration as well. Okay, moving away from unmanned vehicles to a manned vehicle. Uh, we've been working with OceanGate for quite a while. Uh, they're, they're famous for uh, sending a manned submersible, the Titan that you see there, 
uh, down to visit the Titanic and do some sonar scans and uh, videos of it. So um, they're using not only our DAT on their uh, Titan, uh, not on the vehicle itself, but to track the vehicles. They have the Titan and the Cyclops, two different uh, two different depth rating vehicles. But they're also also using blue. blue Blue View sonars from Teledyne Marine and Bowtech Lighting, uh, as well as some other things uh, as well. So, uh, again, this is a, an area where Teledyne Marine can supply uh, a more complete solution by working together across uh, the different companies within our organization. And that leads up to my last case study that I'll talk about today, which is the Sea Raptor that's coming out of the Teledyne Gavia group that's uh, based up in Iceland. Um, the Sea Raptor is a uh, large 6,000 meter rated AUV um, that's used for uh, deep ocean exploration, uh, recovery, uh, tracking of uh, different assets or black box pinger locator, which leads me up to the next slide um, that shows that in the Sea Raptor, we use, they use the black box pinger locator, it's standard equipment in the Sea Raptor. But uh, along with that, they're using several other things from, from the Benthos product line. Those are the ones in the red boxes, the uh, USBL positioning system, uh, acoustic modem, acoustic release technology, uh, sub-bottom profiling module that I, I touched on earlier. Uh, but there's also other things like uh, Blueview sonars, RDI DVLs, rays on multi-beams, uh, CTD from RDI as well. So there's a lot of different things going on uh, or being used within uh, the C Raptor platform. And um, that's the last case study I had. So with that, I'll show a couple of pretty pictures of the Sea Raptor. Uh, say thank you for your time. Um, and uh, also want to let you know that we've got a lot of other webinars going on as part as the uh, part of the new Telerine Marine Link webinar platform. Uh, please uh, sign up to get notified on those uh, at the website that you see right there on the screen and uh, keep a, a, an eye out for uh, new webinars, technologies, and, and other things that we have going on. So uh, thank you again for your time and uh, good luck with your efforts and uh, please reach out to me. If you uh, need anything else, my email address is carl.mancuso at teledyne.com, and I'll spell that. It's C A R L dot M A N C U S O at teledyne.com. Thank you again, and have a great day.